Hello, this is the second video in chapter 4 of Cryptocycle Electronics 2. In the previous video, we learned how to handle projects, and now we will learn more about the tools in the development environment. Let's start by looking at the default layout of the user interface. Start at the top of the development environment window with an overview of the menu bar and icons. The first two items are most common, the file menu providing the usual save, option and similar options, while the edit menu provides editing options such as undo, redo, copy or paste. Next is the source menu option. In its first part you can set comments, for example if you select a line, pressing toggle command will turn it into a comment in the development environment. It is also possible to set the indentation of the code along with some other code formatting options. Under the Refactor tab, you can easily and quickly modify your code, from renaming to moving individual expressions or functions. Items under Navigate help you navigate through a larger code. Here you can move from one part of the code to another or enter into function declarations. In the Search tab, you can search for a file, a word, or a phrase. In the project tab, we can try out the project's build or compile options and configure any related settings. In the run tab, you can find commands related to the debugging function, which will be explained in more detail later. The development environment is basically built from multiple views and perspectives. These can be positioned, closed or opened according to individual preference. The cube ID has three perspectives as default, shown in the top right corner. These affect the position and size of the smaller windows, but mostly which ones are displayed and which ones are not. The first is the C, C++ view, which is basically designed for writing or building the code. Here you can see the project explorer on the left, the open files in the middle and several information windows about the build and the project at the bottom. These can be changed according to your taste, but don't worry if you close one of them by accident, as you can always open it again from the show view submenu of the window tab. On the information panel at the bottom, the console tab describes what the development environment is doing, for example, which files it is compiling. Let's have a look at what it prints out when you click on the build button in the top icon bar, which features a little hammer icon. If it is not available, click on the source file or project in the project explorer first. We can see that there are a lot of messages coming. They are written here by the built-in compiler. If there are any errors during the build, you can view them in the Problems tab, and if you click on a line, the development environment will take you to the location of the error. The errors can also be seen in the console. Clicking on the MX icon in the top right corner will open the CubeMX perspective, which we will learn how to use later in the following video in this chapter. If you click on the little bug icon in the top right corner, you will switch to the debug perspective. Here you will see a new window where you can get more information about the microcontroller during the debugging process. This will be explained in detail in chapter 6. In the previous chapter, we have already discussed that it is useful to create our program in a structured way for clarity. That is not to write all our code in the main.c file, but to split it into source and header files. There are two ways to do it. If we place the .c and .h files in the core subfolder of the project folder, it is sufficient to place an include directive in the main.c. However, if we want to separate the source files we created from the elements generated by the development environment, we should place them in a separate library. Create a new folder within the project, right click on the project, then select new source folder option, making sure that you choose the source folder option, not the folder option. Now give it the name external. Within this, create a source subfolder and an include subfolder. The former will contain the .c files, the latter the .h files. Create a file named example.c in the source folder, right click on the folder then select new source file option. Proceed similarly in the include folder, adding a header file there named example.h. If you open the .c file, you will see that it is completely empty. Place the hashtag and include example.h directive in it. This tells the compiler where to look for the declarations. Now let's write the skeleton of a function. Let's call the function example function. 
it is not a complicated task, but when we try to ride the braces, we run into a little obstacle. As the development environment is not designed for the Hungarian language, there may be some conflicts between the English and Hungarian keyboard layouts. For example, to type the open brace on the Hungarian keyboard, you have to press Algier plus B, while on the English keyboard there is a separate key for it. The problem comes from the fact that the given key combination is a shortcut key by default in the cube IDE, so we can't type braces, which would be quite important for us, as it is an essential part of programming. Of course, there is a solution for this. Let's look at it. Select Window and Preferences from the top menu bar, then in the pop-up window, select Keys from the general drop-down menu. In the search box, type Skip All to find the command you want to change. Select it, then click on the Unbind Command button. After clicking Apply and Close, let's try it. Now we will be able to type braces. Let's place the declaration of the function in the example.h file. This creates both the definition and the declaration of our function. In the main.c file, place the directive for the header file, then call this function from within the main function. Afterwards, even if we try to build our program, it will give an error because it does not know where to look for an example function. We need to show the compiler where to find the declaration of our function using the hashtag include directive. Since we've done that, we just need to show it where to find the included file. Right click on the project name, then select properties. The same is available from project properties tab in the top menu bar. We will be greeted by the following window. Scroll down to the C, C++ general option and within it select paths and symbols. Here, under the include tab, you can see in which folder the compiler looks for the header files. Add the folder that contains our header file. To do this, click on the add button. Select the is a workspace path option, meaning the folder is located inside the workspace and then select the external slash ink folder inside the project by pressing the workspace button. Accept this, and you can see that the folder you have specified is included in the folder. Press the Apply and Close button, and in the pop-up windows, press Yes. You can see that the compiling is done without errors. We have successfully separated our own files and shown the compiler where to look for them. In the previous video, we talked quite a lot about compiling, and we have done this process a few times with the development environment. Compiling is a time-consuming process. After compiling, you can see how long the actual build took in the console window. Currently, it doesn't take much time, but for much larger projects where there are, for example, many separate files, which can be up to thousands of lines long, the compiling time increases proportionally to the complexity and size of the code. To speed up and optimize the compilation process, there is a setting in the development environment to allow the program to run several processes in parallel at the same time. Make sure you take advantage of this opportunity, because you can save yourself a lot of time if you don't wait for the long translations. Let's reopen the project properties window we have just seen. Click on the C, C++ build option and then on the behavior tab. Make sure that the enable parallel build option is checked and the use optimal jobs option is selected. When developing a project, we are working with a complex system of source and header files, so information is not always right in front of us, but often in different folders and files. Because it can take a long time to find them, especially if you don't know where to look for them, the development environment has several useful shortcuts that we use very often. Let's go back to the call of the earlier created example function in the main.c. Let's assume that we didn't write this function, so we don't know what it does or in which file in the project it is defined. If we click on the function name and press F2, a floating window will show us the definition of the function so we can easily learn how it works. In this case, the definition of the function is not shown directly, but if there is a comment in front of it, the display starts with the comment instead of the definition, which usually helps a lot in understanding. But what if this function does not work the way we want? Click on the function name again, but this time press F3. The development environment will immediately open the file that contains the function for us and assign us the first line of the function. The same operation can be achieved by clicking on the function name by holding the control key. These are all the cases where our function is already called. How do we know that this function even exists and can be called? 
The development environment provides a solution to this also. In the main.c file, start a new line under the call to example function and type example. If you press Ctrl plus space at the end of the word example, the development environment will automatically fill the field with the ending that matches the example term. This is true if you have only one function or variable containing the word example. In the next line, type GPIO, then press Ctrl plus space again. You can see that the development environment offers a lot of options. If we would start typing now, the list of the offered elements would be shorter and shorter. You can see the type of match, for example, typedef, enum, define directive, etc., which helps us to decide which one we need. Otherwise, you don't need to type the whole word, you can activate this help after a few letters. This feature works so well because both developers and libraries use naming conventions. For example, if you want to do something related to a GPIO, the function you need will start with GPIO underscore. That's why it's so easy to find the built-in functions as well. This feature makes the development process much easier, because you just need to know the beginning of the expression and you can find the right one. This brings us to the end of our video. We deliberately skipped over the CubeMX topic earlier, but we'll continue with it in the next part. Until then, see Bye. you all!